men encounter God, when this Emmanuel dimension is revealed, the most valid evidence I wrote here of an encounter with God is a changed heart. The most valid evidence is not a prophetic impartation. There is a dimension of an encounter with God that translates to empowerment. When men meet God, it is not empowerment that starts. It is the, a change, a total change of your heart. Tell me you have met the God of the Bible. I will verify your experience, not by looking for anointing, not by looking for knowledge. Show me your heart before and after. If your heart before and after remains the same, you met a familiar spirit, or you met something that looks like God, but not the God of the Bible. That even when unbelievers encountered a person whose name they did not know, provided it was God, their hearts were not spared. Do you see in all of these expressions that when Emmanuel shows up, the first thing he's looking for is not your mind. The first thing he's looking for is your heart. Your entire life becomes useful to God only when he has access to your heart. Believers learn this. We are giving God our money and that is important. We are giving God our songs. That is important. We are giving God our cars. We are giving God several things. But the one thing that he needs, when men meet God, what he looks for is their heart. When he met with the prophet, he never called him prophet. It is your heart. I want to cleanse your heart and cleanse your lips. When he met Saul, the first thing he, the area he went to was his heart. Did our hearts not burn within us? Ladies and gentlemen, a changed heart. The Bible calls it a broken and a contrite spirit. Is the most biblical evidence of a man meeting God. A man finding God. You are allowed to come as you are provided you have not seen him but the moment he shows up something about his presence goes straight to your heart you can come as an idol worshiper you can come listen if we do not restore this number one we will keep having false encounters that we call God encounters and you find people with all due respect who say I have met God and I know God and when you look at their hearts you will know that it's not the God of the Bible they met whether you are stubborn or not, whether you are anointed or not, whether you are intelligent or not, the one thing that will not be spared in your life if you meet the God of the Bible is your heart. There is no guarantee you will return from that experience with an impartation. That is a later part. But one thing you can have as a souvenir that if you encounter God, you must go back with it and serve the nations is a changed heart. Something about your heart must come under arrest when the God of heaven shows up. Do you know why I'm teaching you this? Many times in church, with all due respect, we sing songs and we call it charging the atmosphere. We shout and we say, Lord, we welcome you. Come into our midst. And we do not know at what point he comes. We hear people cry. We see others roll. And at the end of it, we leave. And the most biblical evidence of his presence is not seen in people. That tells me that many of the times we say he showed up, he really did not come. Because sincerely, ladies and gentlemen, if the God of the Bible shows up in your life, he doesn't need to ask you if you want to be a Christian. That is not going to be his mission. Go and read the Bible. He never met anyone and said, keep practicing what you want to practice, but just meet him. Once you meet him, there will be a permanent alteration to your life. Did you not read in your Bible when Jacob met God? Is it not in your Bible? When Jacob met God, he left with an evidence. Everybody knew that this man had met God. How about Moses? What turned him to be the meekest man on earth? A man who killed an Egyptian and ran away now has the title of the meekest man on earth because he met the God of the Bible. Africa has about the most vocal 
passion for spirituality that I'm aware of. Almost every day something is happening spiritually speaking in Nigeria and Africa. And we have sincere believers. We flock to church. We flock for conferences and all kinds of programs. But the evidence, if they ask you where are you going to, you say I'm going to spend some time with God. But the evidence, the one, the signature evidence is usually not there. Sometimes we return with songs. Where did you learn this from? We say in the presence of God. Sometimes we return with gifts, physical gifts. You mean your church was so kind to have given you meals during the... And, and they carry all those things. But the one thing that proves you met God, many people do not have it. Unfortunately, including those who come out for altar calls. Hallelujah. I can tell you the reason why territories are not transformed. I can tell you the reason why many people are not able to host the power of God and host the grace of God to a dimension that compels the nations to see him. The reason is not that you did not fast. The reason is not that you are not praying. That hard condition, no man escapes it when you are walking with God. I can tell you, there are requirements if you want to be used by God. Number one, if there is only one thing God has to do in your life, that surgical operation within your heart. Hallelujah. Emmanuel. When God shows up, most of what we want to give him is our sickness, our pain, and say, Lord, thank you for coming. Please, come and solve this problem for me. My family has not been doing well. And don't, don't make a mistake of thinking that God does not want to step into those areas. But I can tell you in order of priority, if Jesus were to appear here physically while you are presenting your family needs, he will move past your hand and the first thing he wants is your heart. Your heart. Your heart. There is something that when he does to your heart, ladies and gentlemen, every other thing in your life will start respecting you. The disobedience that comes from elemental forces, they are not disobeying you. There is a state of heart they were designed to obey and respect. And since you do not have it, they will not respect you. When principalities and powers come, you can shout and say, I'm a Christian, but there is a state of heart. It's like a software. If they do not find it, you can say, Satan, I cast you. They are going nowhere. That's why we keep making a mockery of our Christian experience. Ladies and gentlemen, when you want to take matters seriously, you say it is the heart of the matter. Am I right on that? The heart of the matter means if you have been distracted before now, lend your destiny, your rapt attention. Because if you miss out on that one, every other thing will not make sense. The heart of the believer's journey is not empowerment. The heart of the believer's journey is not enlightenment. The heart of the believer's journey is that purging and that transformation that happens. When you meet the God of the Bible, when Emmanuel shows up, ladies and gentlemen, no matter who you are, you see, when the heart is checked, flesh, pride, lost, all the things that are, I hope you know that those things are powered centrally from the heart. Many of the things we are binding and casting draw their life from the state of your heart. The life that powers the flesh is the heart condition of his victim. Did you hear what I said? The impotency of spiritual power, the, the strength of demonic forces, they are powered ultimately by the state of the heart of the victim. No matter what kind of prayer you pray, please listen to me. No matter what kind of Bible study you do, if you do not disengage by a change of heart, I assure you, your conditions will not change. We change every other thing, but the one thing that needs to be changed. Change location, your life will not change. Change clothes, your life will not change. Move to another field of study, your life may not change. But let your heart change. You will watch everything around you because the central the central control system in your life and destiny. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen, is your heart. Behind a man of power 
is not just oil on his head. That oil is like a clock. Without a battery, it will not work. The heart of man is what powers everything in his life. Are we together? What was the problem with the rich fool? Was it his money? It could not have been his money. Why was he called a rich fool? Because wealth and foolishness does not go hand in hand. You need wisdom to even be wealthy. Now, Jesus calls a man a rich fool. The foolishness of that man was his heart condition. He said, my soul, find rest on this. Are we together? When I began to walk with God, the Lord told me that the secret to the revelation of the glory of God upon the life of a man, I am telling you, beyond fasting, beyond prayer, beyond wanting to announce yourself, is to lie down on that spiritual surgical table. The Bible calls, it says, I beseech you brethren, by the mercies of God, that you offer your bodies unto God a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. When that great physician, I hope you know he's not just called a great physician because he heals. He's called a great physician because he's a great surgeon. That when he gets into that surgery room, there is something he does. He opens up that heart and my goodness, you see the kind of content in that heart the bitterness and the anger and all the things that have empowered altars. You have fasted and prayed and in the middle of the fasting the spirit still appear to you. You are shouting Jesus, Jesus and they are not living. It's a message. Their presence is telling you that there is a central control room within you that keeps giving us life. Listen. For those of you who are medical practitioners in dealing with cancer patients there are recent technologies where they trace the veins and the arteries. Am I, am I right on that? I don't know what they call it. Forgive me. But I know that they try to trace the artery that supplies the blood because that cancer cell also depends on something and that they trace it and block it as a way of dealing with it so that while they are dealing with it, it does not spread. Are we together? I can tell you why the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is very powerless. There is no time in history where men fast and pray as it is now. I can tell you, if it is fasting, we are fasted and we are fasting. If it's prayer, there is no time that knowledge has been so abundant in the body of Christ. Type anything spiritual and put enter on YouTube. Something will come out. Spirituality is at its highest level. And yet we are not able to experience the power, the glory, the grace that these experiences were supposed to bring. You know why? Because in the economy of God, the heart condition of a man is the central control room. I'm handing you a very big key tonight. The heart of a man, not the size of your Bible, not your speaking. You can speak all the oratory and the English, Greek and Hebrew. They are only supporting systems. The deadness of the state of your heart can paralyze anything even if it's your, a correct spiritual activity. Finish and share the grace. Or from the depth of your heart you can say, Lord, I know that there is a dimension of glory you seek to reveal in my life. There is a level of rest, prosperity, influence, power. You want to cause my voice to be heard across the nations. But I confess that this heart condition, I do not even know the state of my heart. As a preacher, if I am to assess myself, I will say I am alright. But you come, the surgeon, the judge of all the earth, come and review my heart. He says, search my heart and try my thoughts. If there is any wicked way in me, then he says, lead me to the way everlasting. Someone pray. Pray in one minute. Cry to the God of heaven. Some of you are outside, across the overflows. Cry to the God of heaven within the next one minute. Help my heart, oh God. I do not know what is resident within therein, but I cry to you in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. I hand over everything my heart and its content 
good or otherwise, I submit my heart to the great physician to do that destiny work of purging, to do that destiny work of making, to do that destiny work of lifting. Emmanuel, you have come to me before we talk of empowerment, before we talk of enlightenment, let that purification happen within my heart. From that standpoint, let loss die. From that standpoint, let pride die. From that standpoint, let an evil heart die. A forward lip die. Let a heart that is poised to doing evil, let it die. The central processing unit that powers darkness, that powers curses, that makes my prayer of non-effect, makes my fasting of non-effect. I pray, nothing happens. I fast, nothing happens. I study the Bible, nothing happens. I preach, nothing happens. I rebuke demons, nothing happens. It's not the activity that is wrong. It is that there is a wrong heart. The psalmist said, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Ten more seconds. Break the power of curses. Not just by conducting a deliverance service. No. Break the power of curses. Break pride in me. Satan is not this powerful. The curses in my family are not this powerful. The spirits of witchcraft are not that powerful. Jesus died. He rose again. He defeated sin, hell, death and the grave. Why is the power of the cross not working in my life? I can tell you the problem is not lack of anointing. The problem is not lack of fasting. The problem is not lack of prayer. The problem is not God's inability to lift you. That circumcision has not yet happened. Oh, you cannot defeat Jericho. Joshua, do not go around Jericho until the circumcision happens. The empowerment comes. The strategy comes after the circumcision has happened. Go ahead and pray. In the name of Jesus.